So can you speak to me a little bit about collaborating with your cinematographer and, and um, the guy who did your scoring? I, I told Pedro, this is going to be like a documentary. We, we're going to forget about storyboards, forget about a shooting list. We're going to be there for the actors, very close to them, and try to capture the real emotions they went through. And with Michael, it was very interesting because we did something similar with the score. There's a lot of silence. And silence, it's very interesting because it's not telling the audience what to think about. It's the audience interpreting the story. Uh, and also you are not um, telling the audience how to feel, which makes it more interesting, you know, because they can participate and get a, their own idea of what they're watching. That's why I asked you, because there are a lot of moments where there's a lot of silence, but I'm particularly interested in those first 10 or 15 minutes of the film where you do the, the actual crash. Mm -hmm. How did you accomplish that? Because watching bodies get flung and the sounds of the crunching yeah. of the metal and the, the limbs breaking, how long did it take you to shoot that sequence? Actually, that was at the very end. It was a oh. very long shoot, more than 140 days. But that was a very, 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 very late, the last thing we did, we did. Um, because we wanted to focus in the characters, in the story, what happened in the mountain, and we knew that that was going to be very technical. Mm -hmm. And we just followed the same methodology, which was to be very close to the characters. We did uh, lots of interviews with the survivors. We more, did more than 50 hours of interviews. Mm -hmm. So it was about getting all the details, and staying with them in, into that plane. Uh, and knowing exactly what they knew, which was very little. They didn't know what was happening. So that be it becomes something very immersive because you are sitting with them. Basically, there are no shots, like three, only like three, four shots from the outside of the plane. You are all the time with them. You don't know what's going on. And then one of the things that they told me that remember the, the accident, almost like something very physical. And that's what we did in this moment at the end. That, uh, when, when they finally crashed against the snow, the seats... They, 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 they reacted almost like an accordion, you know, like crashing. Each. That was the worst moment of all. Mm -hmm. And we focused in, 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 the, in, the, in the pain that they went through in that moment, you know, to, to make the audience understand how, how big was the shock for them. That moment was visceral for me, and, and it, it, it kind of lived in my brain for the remainder of the film, because knowing that, I know this is a true story, and knowing that that happened and that they come out of it on the other end okay, was like, that moment just lingers for me, so you, I really you want know to what ask was you. One, one of the references for that scene, you will, you will never guess that. Tell me. The shower scene in Psycho. What? Because it, it, it's, we're coming from this <laughs> moment of anticipation, very long shots, you don't know what's going on, and suddenly is this moment of chak, 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 chak. And I wanted to make the audience feel the same, you know? And I, I was trying to explain Pedro Luque, the cinematographer, how I felt it, and then I, I said, it's, 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 it's like the shower in Psycho. It's like chak, chak, and it's so long, because that's exactly the feeling that they went through, that it never ends. They were like into that plane. They were crashing, and it's, no, it's, it, it had this impression that it never ran. And, and it reminded me that moment in Psycho, like ta, 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 ta. You know there what other just... moment struck me too is the moment where they're being showered, and you watch the grime and the dirt roll down yeah. the sink. I loved that so much because it was almost it was the cleansing of their bodies, but it was a cleansing of that moment. I really love that you yeah, did that. Yeah, and there is a detail. It's a, there is a shot with. Two, two guys in the shower. And yes. They can tell you the, the kind of physical connection that they have. So you see the two guys in the shower, and one of them is trying to get the, the, the stain, and he cannot, which is a way of, of telling the audience, this stain is going to be there forever. Absolutely. You know? Well, I have a stain in my heart forever from <laughs> watching that, because I'm traumatized, <laughs> but in the best, most beautiful way possible. Thank you so very much for your artistry and Thank for giving you. us this film. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. You You're welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I feel like it's about the indomitable human spirit and faith, right? And so knowing what you know now, would you have lived your life differently after having gone through that experience? Of course, of course. I, I think that I, I value people like the shepherd, mm. that he left everything to help me. How many times you find in society people that would help you with our interests? So I, I, I live in a more grateful way of life because I had a chance other people didn't have. 
I love that. What made you go into your cardiologist, right? Pediatric cardiology. Yeah, my mother is a nurse. So or she's retired now, but she was a nurse for many, many years, for over 50 years, I want to say. Uh -huh. So what made you want to be a cardiologist? Well, my father was a cardiologist, and I had the gate open to go through. And okay. then when I went to adult cardiology, I saw that people had all their rotten coronaries and they were all into pieces. And children were everything new. You just fix the part and the kid goes along. Pediatric cardiology is fascinating. And then we went into a fetal cardiology. Mm. And before the child is born, you know who's the surgeon that is going to do the appropriate surgery. And this is something that the Andes Mountains made me because I got so many friends being so popular that I can phone uh, whatever in St. Louis, pediatric cardiology, and then I will have a good surgeon to, to help me. This is the mountain. This is the mountain. You have such a beautiful spirit. You're so full of life and just, you are just pure joy. You really are. You are just pure joy. What did you feel? when you saw this film? I felt I was back there. Yeah. I, f I was seeing my friends again. Mm. It was like, like a miracle of, of life to be there talking with them and seeing them around and, and missing that I have, could have done things so differently than what we did with a Monday newspaper, as you say, you know, you know what's the name, the name of the lottery, and this happens a lot in life. You don't know which way to go, but you must go some way. Mm. And we went through the wrong side, and we did it. So it's maybe not so important to have the best answers, but to choose an appropriate one. The ones that your brain tells you, but also here to your heart. What did your brain tell you while you were in the process of, of trying to get help? You know, what did your brain, because it was cold, y'all were hungry, you were dirty, you needed a bath, you know what I mean? What was going through your mind in that moment where you were like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. What in what triggered your brain to go, you know what, I have to? Was that I look at the other guys that they were into pieces and they say, in this group, I'm the only one that can score the try. So Roberto, don't look at your advantage. Look at that you were chosen, chosen to go and, and to go for it. And I said, what the heck? Instead of dying here by the fuselage full of, of pee and full of dead people and parts and everything. I will die in the virgin snow. And this is what, uh, if I have to die, I will die lots better than here. But maybe I won't die. I will have the chance. Uh, well, you've had more than a chance. And I'm so glad that I had a chance to talk to you. You bring tears to my eyes. You really do. You're, so, you're a beautiful, beautiful soul. And I'm glad that the universe saw fit to keep you here just a little while longer. You deserve it. You have also the same heart as I have. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't take it. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. My dear. Ah, you smell so well. Also. <laughs>